Before departure, set your altimeter to the local field elevation. The VNC or sectional is the basic tool for navigation. However, many pilots are now using GPS as an adjunct to their sectionals. The GPS is a valuable tool. However, don't fall into the trap of keeping your eyes glued to the GPS. Make sure that you're spending most of your time with eyes up and out, watching for other aircraft, keeping an eye on the weather, and relating your position over the ground to your sectional chart. As you approach your destination airdrome, remember that every airdrome, controlled or uncontrolled, acts like an airplane magnet. Aircraft are arriving, departing, and maneuvering on the ground as well as in the air. They may be flying low, they may be flying slow, and you're guaranteed they'll be spending at least some of their time in flight attitudes which do not afford the best visibility. Look out. Keep your eyes constantly searching for other traffic. But remember to pause momentarily while scanning as your peripheral vision will then have a better chance of picking up any nearby motion. Just bear in mind that this trick doesn't necessarily work on aircraft heading directly towards you. Plan to arrive at your destination aerodrome at least 500 feet above circuit altitude if airspace allows. Some aerodromes, especially those located near major centers, may call for lower overflight altitudes to avoid interference with aircraft operating in controlled airspace above. Your VNC will provide you with that information. When you're inspecting the aerodrome from above, you can determine the upwind and downwind side of the airport by observing the runway currently in use. However, do not assume this is necessarily the best runway to land on until you've confirmed that information by taking a careful look at the windsock. It may be that pilots in the circuit have failed to notice that the wind has changed to a tailwind since they began their flights. If that's the case, and it does happen, you'll have to decide whether the runway is long enough and the tailwind low enough to safely go with the flow. Or if you need to watch for a safe hole in the circuit where you can land in the correct into wind direction. If there's no traffic in the circuit, then it's up to you to determine the runway into wind and how you're safely going to fly the approach. You should also have ascertained ahead of time whether or not right-hand circuits are specified. While overhead, observe the general condition of the runway surface while checking for obstacles and debris. And don't forget to include areas on either side of the runway which may contain vehicles or wildlife that may enter the runway. Your descent to circuit altitude will be on the upwind side of the runway before crossing over the middle of the field to join mid-downwind which is the preferred choice to do a final check of the runway and get a good picture of any other traffic in the circuit. Just because you didn't observe traffic in the circuit while flying overhead doesn't mean that there is no traffic. So maintain a vigilant watch for other aircraft and while downwind, complete your downwind checks to minimize as many distractions as possible while you prepare to land. Before turning final for the intended runway, check for any aircraft on a long final and also watch for traffic ahead of you that you might have missed in the circuit. Once on final, constantly check for traffic below you, especially if you're flying a low-winged aircraft. It's better to S-turn your way down an ordo final, searching all potential blind spots, than to fall victim to a classic low-wing, high-wing mid-air on final. Take a final note of any obstacles on the approach itself an eye on the traffic about to enter the runway you're lined up for, and be vigilant about any wildlife in the vicinity. In short, expect the unexpected. And always be prepared to go around if things don't look right. If the grass looks too long, the runway slope is not what you expected, any obstacle appears on the runway, or that headwind turns out to be a tailwind. Keep in mind that old aviation adage, it's always better to have gone around wishing you'd had landed than to have landed and wished you'd gone around. After landing, slow to a safe speed before exiting the active runway, but don't relax just yet. Unmaintained maneuvering areas can also have their share of hazards. Be sure you have adequate wingtip clearance on each side of your aircraft, in addition to propeller clearance from the ground. Don't just watch where the propeller and wingtips are, consider where they're going to be. A tricycle gear aircraft only needs to taxi into a shallow depression on an unprepared taxiway in order for a propeller strike to occur. And a tail dragger's main gear, encountering the same type of terrain, may stand up on its nose, destroying the prop and potentially bending your crankshaft, or even flip over completely onto its back. When it's time to depart, set your altimeter to the field elevation. 
start up and taxi as usual. But take this time for a good look around to spot other traffic operating in the circuit. Before entering the active runway, position your aircraft so you can have a good look at base and final for any landing aircraft. And after takeoff, be sure to climb straight ahead to circuit altitude before departing the area and proceeding safely en route.